Welcome to the Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a five second delay. Use this time to complete your notes. When you are done, push play and move on to the next slide. This presentation will begin in five seconds. Welcome to Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture 1.3 on demonstrating consent and let's talk about the American melting pot. That's right. That's the face of our country today. In fact, if you look at this pie chart of U.S. population by race and ethnicity in 2012, you will see that even back then, we were a diverse nation. And as we move forward in our history, we will grow more diverse. But here's the thing. Nobody living today originally consented to the government we live under. Instead, Consent to govern here was originally granted by these guys, and these guys do not look like the pie chart from 2012. Better yet, our consent can be traced to British political ideas, and today, not many people rely on British political ideas when making decisions about our government. So we have to ask ourselves, how did our country originally show its consent to be governed? And more importantly, do we still consent to be governed in the same way today? To answer these questions, let's go to the next slide. The foundation of American civics can be traced back to our English origins. So we need to look back, and I mean like way back into English history to understand how American government works today. This is John. He was king of England in 1215 and he made a mistake. He tried to take the power from the people. Well, They revolted and we had a civil war. To end this war, John had to sign a document called the Magna Carta, which set forth that the power of the sovereign, in this case the king, could be restrained or held back in order to protect the rights of free men. Men. In other words, John agreed that once power is given to the people, it cannot be taken back. That is a cornerstone of American democratic life. Okay, well let's get to America. Here's Pocahontas. Oh, that movie is wrong in so many ways, but more importantly, it missed out on the cool stuff, like the charters of the Virginia Company of London, which guaranteed the rights of Englishmen to colonists. What does that mean? It means the King of England signed a document that said, once you go to America, you are still an Englishman, and you have all the rights of an Englishman. But it went farther. The first charter signed in 1606 provided for the sale of shares and profits to colonists. So not only will you be an Englishman over there, but you're a shareholder in the company. You own part of the company. And if you make any profits, we'll give them to you. And then we signed a second charter, which allowed the company to choose a governor from its shareholders. No longer would the King of England assign a governor to run the Jamestown colony, but the people living there would pick their own man. And that is the very beginning of representative democracy in North America. Unfortunately, Jamestown didn't do so great. But the failure of the company led to a decree in 1624, making Virginia a royal colony governed by the crown. And here's how it worked. The governor of Virginia was somebody appointed by the king. But the people in Virginia, they had representative democracy. They met in something called the House of Burgesses and they ruled themselves. And the cool thing is that original House of Burgesses is today's Virginia General Assembly. Go to the next slide. So now it's time to talk about the Declaration of Independence, right? Not quite yet. You see, Virginia still has an important role to play in influencing modern American government. The Virginia Declaration of Rights, signed in 1776, served as a model for the Bill of Rights of the United States. 
States Constitution. How important is this document? Section 1 was used by Thomas Jefferson as the template or roadmap for the introduction to the Declaration of Independence. So before this country tells Great Britain that we want our independence, the colonists in Virginia are telling the king we have rights. And the enumerated or stated principles found in the Declaration of Rights includes the concept of government derived from the people, limited government, rule of law, a concept you're going to learn called due process, the right to bear arms, and religious freedom. Does any of this sound familiar yet? Virginia is highly influential in the way we created our modern American government. Go to the next slide. Here we go. It's time to declare our independence. The Declaration of Independence was drafted by Thomas Jefferson and adopted by the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia in July of 1776. And this document does two special things. Number one, the Declaration set forth multiple grievances of the colonists against the King of Great Britain. In other words, it's a country breakup song. Here's what you done did to me, King of Great Britain. You abandoned the rule of law. There's no representative government. The military is taking over the civilian power. We have taxation without representation in British government. You won't even let us send anyone over there to represent our rights in Britain, even though we're paying you money. You're using mercenaries, people who are not even part of the government to enforce the rule of law. You've restricted passage on land and on the high seas, and you've failed to keep colonists safe from domestic insurrection. Colonists are going after colonists. Honest. Here's how you broke our hearts, Great Britain. The second thing the Declaration does is the document declared colonial independence from Great Britain as free and independent states. Because of this document, these guys go to work. Go to the next slide. The Declaration of Independence does one more important thing, and it has nothing to do with declaring independence. Instead, it is when we first say what type of government we consent to be ruled by. The Declaration of Independence affirmed certain unalienable rights, including the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We call that the American dream, and we specifically say we do not consent to these rights being taken away from us. But the Declaration also set forth that government is designed to affect safety and happiness amongst the governed. In other words, we consent to being ruled by a government that works for us and not against us. And you will see this consent show itself throughout American history. I mean, this guy talks about it. We here highly resolve that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Finally, the coolest thing about the Declaration? The Declaration has no legal authority in the way that we govern the United States today. So we celebrate July 4th, but... Our most important days are yet to come. Thank you for watching this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.